guys following on from the last video called Rope Rom Part 1 have uh, made a lot of headway um, and this is actually a fully working uh, digitally read in 4-bit ROM uh, which stores the word 0101 and uh, can actually be accessed and read in by the microcontroller um, started with a PIC 16 f 628 a which is a chip I'm very familiar with um, this was actually just a test board again to test the the principle or you know, the well, basically what I was interested in is current uh, these uh, output lines uh, can only deliver 25 milliamps of current and uh, similar to, to a logic chip that I'd like to use to cycle the address lines uh, that only puts out 20 milliamps I uh, wanted to check that I could just read that directly into a microcontroller. Uh, these are already diode clamped inputs. Um, so in the, the final version I'd be using uh, all eight lines of port B as inputs. A single 8-bit uh, wide parallel input and read a byte at a time. Uh, for this circuit I'm cycling uh, only using four outputs and cycling these address lines one at a time and reading in a bit at a time uh, so that's the, the four bits are done with the address lines rather than having four cores and one address line I've got one core and four address lines so uh, the one actually passes through the core to earth and uh, the zero uh, is, is a wire that will bypass the core to earth and I've still got the capacitor and in the prototype I've actually got the copper wire for completeness even though that's uh, really quite useless. Um, this LED isn't really required, It's um, it was for a PWM test uh, to, before I tried to read it in, uh, I just wanted to make sure the thing was working. Uh, these are status LEDs and the green one actually uh, lights up for a set bit as it cycles the four bits at a speed that a human can see. Um, so for the secondary I read that uh, into port B0, bit 0 as an input. Uh, so I've got four outputs here, uh, three pins of port B that aren't used, and then port BO uh, is the input, and it's not an interrupt. Uh, it's all about timing, much like the, the core RAM. Uh, basically there's time to turn a pin on, and then go back and in the following instructions read the pulse back in uh, so you can do it with the same microcontroller which was interesting so the first thing this board will do when it sees power is uh, power up cycle the leds for a test uh, then it will go through two cycles of uh, high speed uh, pulses which is uh, to light this led uh, since it's uh, connected to port B the LED doesn't light anymore but it doesn't stop it working so I've left it there if I pull this jumper pin it disconnects the port B input that looks for pulses and then I can light the LED only dimly uh, but it is enough if it's a high intensity LED you can look straight down on it and see it so um, it can be controlled but uh, I'll power up uh, what it'll do sorry after that it'll um, uh, cycle the four output pins and just send one pulse uh, and then uh, quickly after it sends that pulse before it turns the output pin off it'll read the input pin and then turn the output pin off and then you'll get a one second uh, lit green LED for a set bit and a one second uh, green LED off for a bit that's clear Meanwhile, the orange LED is flashing to count out time, uh, whether a bit's set or not. Um, so we'll give it... Now the two cycles of PWM, if the LED was working. So since the bit pattern is uh, 1010, uh, every other uh, bit that you see is set because it just cycles back and forth uh, so it's kind of the output's a bit like a flip-flop I suppose um, we have the four bits here don't know if you can see them but there's uh, the bypassing copper wires are here they're just directly earthed so we've got an output pin through a capacitor earth and really no reason but that is a wire that would bypass a core um, and to 
reproduce uh, Jerry Ellsworth uh, demonstration, uh, we can show that uh, the magnetic coupling might be too effective if we introduce a permanent magnet, which uh, is on the back of this speaker. I don't have a, a fancy bought one. We'll see how close we can get it. Oh, well, it wants to stick. But uh, in that case, we don't have any coupling, so we won't read any bits because, uh, yeah, the transformer fails to work. But um, I was hoping we could do that without touching it, but the ferrite does want to stick. So um, there we go, it's in close proxy. Oh, it still works. Let's see how close we can get. And still. Oh, I think we might actually have to be touching it. Ooh, oh, yeah, getting close. It's, I can really feel the drag now onto the, and, oh, no, I think we do actually have to touch it. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I should buy a, a proper magnet for these demos. I'll get a rare earth magnet and work from far away. I'll actually do that. I'll go out and get one tomorrow because uh, as this progresses, uh, yeah, we've got an 8-bit version. Um, and then for the demo, I probably will want to eliminate some bits when I'm cycling through bytes. <laughs> uh, I could just hold a magnet over, over a corner and uh, just stop one bit from ever working and make a pretty good demo. So that's all for now. Uh, this is a completed core ROM. The next one though, it'll be on this board and uh, I'm looking at all uh, maybe 64 wires, so that, that's an array of 64 bytes, which uh, if you're going to do it, do it big, I think. Okay, well, ready for part three. See ya.